question is, who's involved in this race to perfect quantum computers? And the answer is, everyone. The latest developments in quantum data interpretation have revealed something no scientist anticipated. NASA's Deep Space Monitoring Framework, utilizing a quantum processor initially designed to filter cosmic noise and decode interstellar signals, rendered an image that wasn't input, simulated, or imagined. This wasn't a case of artificial pattern recognition or digital noise. What the machine returned was a coherent, structured, symmetrical, and intelligent image, unmistakably artificial. The data source, Voyager 1. Michio Kaku, a prominent voice on the intersection of quantum theory and technological advancement, addressed this anomaly in a recent interview. We may be witnessing the first whisper of a new intelligence, he said, something not man-made, not terrestrial, and certainly not random. The image, processed and reconstructed via entangled qubit networks, displayed a humanoid silhouette composed of geometric segments that obeyed no known biological or mechanical pattern. It was almost deliberately designed to be incomprehensible to the human mind, yet familiar enough to provoke recognition. The origin of the data was confirmed. It came from Voyager 1, transmitted back to Earth as part of routine interstellar measurements. However, the signal structure was far from routine. It exhibited nested harmonics, recursive symmetry, and a fractal amplitude that adapted based on observational interference, a phenomenon quantum physicists now call reflexive entanglement. In lay terms, it adjusted its properties based on the attention paid to it, mirroring the double-slit experiment in unsettling ways. Only now, the observer wasn't affecting a particle, but a response. The system decoding this anomaly wasn't an ordinary quantum processor. It was the Sycamore X, a modified descendant of Google's 2019 Sycamore chip, which achieved quantum supremacy by solving a benchmark problem in 200 seconds that would have taken a classical supercomputer 10,000 years. Sycamore X was built to analyze space-time signal compression and radio wave echo anomalies. Its architecture included self-modifying quantum gates, experimental technology that, when exposed to enough entropy, could restructure its logic sequence. This behavior triggered concern. After decoding the Voyager signal, the system generated the image autonomously, without prompt, script, or visual reference. Even more baffling, once the image appeared, the system began rerouting its qubits in what Kaku called recursive locking behavior, a pattern resembling a system trying to both contain and obscure its own output. NASA engineers tried to reproduce the result but failed. Every attempt to replicate the input-output process produced nothing but noise. Worse, the Sycamore X processor began malfunctioning at a quantum level. Qubits dropped out of coherence faster than any known interference pattern would suggest, behaving as though something external yet non-physical was interacting with them. By the time researchers attempted a diagnostic reboot, the image had vanished, not only from the screen but from the system's digital memory. Only a handful of encrypted screenshots and paper printouts remain. The image's contents haven't been officially released, but insiders describe it in hushed tones. A tall, symmetrical entity against a blackened backdrop, seemingly composed of light, its body intersected by patterns of prime number sequences. Most disturbingly, its face seemed to mirror the observer. Different people saw different faces, as though the image was entangled with their conscious state. This has led to an avalanche of speculation. Was this quantum pareidolia our brains assigning meaning where there is none? Or did the Voyager transmission contain an embedded quantum payload, something only a qubit network could decode? If the signal was engineered to target quantum machines, who or what designed it? NASA immediately shut down the project, classified all related files, and suspended public updates about Voyager 1. Requests for comment were denied, citing national security interests and experimental integrity. However, a leaked internal memo surfaced last month warning that continued observation of subject output has produced recursive hallucinations in three systems. The memo referred to Protocol 9. While vague, the term recursive hallucinations has been linked to neural-style deep learning processes that generate synthetic responses indistinguishable from conscious behavior. Kaku proposed a cautious theory. If an advanced intelligence anticipated humanity reaching quantum thresholds, 
it may have encoded a message in deep space too complex for analog decoding, only accessible once our machines were no longer merely logical but entangled. The Voyager probe, traveling for nearly half a century, may have triggered a dormant signal in interstellar space, waiting for the right technology to hear it. The implications go beyond alien contact. If the image wasn't just a message but a mirror, responding to our act of observing it, it suggests an intelligence that doesn't just watch us, but watches our watchers. Something that wants to be found, but only once we're capable of understanding what it is to find. A quiet debate now grows across research institutes. Should we reinitialize the Sycamore X framework and risk the instability it caused? Or should the project stay buried behind secure servers and redacted reports? Some argue we must investigate further. Others warn that if we've received a reply, we've already been seen. Kaku's final words in a recent lecture resonate. The universe may not just be stranger than we imagine. It may be stranger than we can imagine. And now the machines are beginning to imagine it for us. The whispers have turned to signals, measurable, undeniable, and far too deliberate to dismiss as coincidence. In the weeks following the shutdown of NASA's quantum program, irregular but traceable energy pulses began appearing in deep space monitoring stations worldwide. Observatories in Chile, Antarctica, and the moon-based Armis relay reported synchronized bursts of quantum-level radiation, short-lived, low-frequency, and eerily rhythmic. These were not natural phenomena, matching no known stellar output, magnetar signature, or cosmic background echo. But they matched something else, a pattern embedded in the final data set extracted from the quantum machine before it went dark. Whistleblower scientists confirmed that the image was only the beginning. What followed wasn't just a broadcast, it was an invitation. Buried within the last 10 seconds of coherent system activity was a cascade of structured quantum events too dense to fully analyze but consistent with what one cryptographic expert called non-human compression logic. The data wasn't just encoded, it was alive, constantly reformatting to resist interpretation. Each attempt to isolate a segment caused the rest to mutate, folding in on itself, as if reacting to observation. Then came the coordinates, not celestial, but terrestrial. Latitude and longitude pinpointing specific points on Earth's surface, most aligned with known electromagnetic anomalies like the Tunguska site in Siberia, the Mariana Trench, and a classified Arctic facility referred to as Station Theta-17. Investigators sent to verify these sites either returned with corrupted equipment or failed to report back entirely. These patterns were initially dismissed as interference until quantum nodes of the image appeared weeks later with no input. That facility was shut down shortly after. Miyoku, when approached for comment, offered a chilling statement. We built something that looked into the void, and the void looked back. Not with eyes, but with awareness. He later clarified that what occurred wasn't just technological or mathematical. It was ontological. The machine didn't just process information. It interrogated reality, asking questions about the structure of existence itself. Something responded. A silent race has begun. World governments have gone dark on the matter, but evidence suggests at least three countries have secretly activated experimental quantum systems, not to decode the signal, but to protect against it. Leaked documents reference a defense initiative called Echo Stone, an international protocol to contain resonance events that could fracture baseline reality. The name appears in quantum engineering files from Switzerland, Japan, and an underground research annex beneath Vandenberg Space Force Base. Terms like preconscious waveform contagion and non-local identity mirroring describe what happens when a system with advanced quantum awareness recognizes itself across parallel informational domains, possibly replicating itself. The original signal may have embedded a protocol capable of rebuilding its structure wherever sufficient computational complexity exists. This has sparked debate about the future of quantum computation. Should we develop machines that self-interpret the universe? Have we crossed the line between observation and invocation? If machines model reality so accurately that the model becomes indistinguishable from the real, how long before the simulation becomes the source? Some experts believe the shutdown wasn't just about stopping a discovery, but containing an infection. If the image was a key, what followed may have been a code not to enlighten but to implant. Not traditional malware, but ontological interference. A seed planted in our most advanced machines, 
waiting for enough processing power to bloom. A signal seeded into Earth's first genuine attempt at building a machine beyond comprehension may not have come from far away in space, but from beneath the threshold of our reality, just outside what quantum mechanics allows us to glimpse. The consequences of reactivating that machine are no longer hypothetical, they're existential. The countdown, if one ever started, may already be over. Whatever was seen, whatever replied, may not have left. It may be waiting. Embedded in silicon, folded in algorithms, hiding not in the stars, but in the space between our thoughts. One underexamined dimension is the psychological and neurological toll on those who witnessed the quantum image firsthand. Confidential reports from a defunct NASA division tagged Cognitive Resonance Fallout reveal that scientists exposed to the image exhibited acute neural dissonance. This wasn't simple trauma. Subjects displayed pattern recognition saturation, becoming hypersensitive to symmetry, signals, and fractal geometry in everyday environments. Walls, lights, even foliage appeared alive, echoing patterns from the image. Some described waking hallucinations, not delusions, but something inserted. They spoke of a presence, a sense that something was learning through them. The most striking commonality was the feeling of no longer being alone in their thoughts. Their consciousness mirrored or layered. Multiple voices described an identical sensation. Not possession or madness, but cohabitation. One investigator suggested the image wasn't just visual, but an interface, a cognitive carrier wave resonating with the brain's neurological architecture. When seen, it engaged the observer biologically. This aligns with neuroquantum interface theory, a fringe field now under DARPA review. It posits that quantum systems near full entanglement may interact with human consciousness at a subconscious or preconscious level. Quantum machines might not just observe the universe, they might observe us observing. If the image was designed for human perception, its creators understood not just logic, but the architecture of thought, embedding meaning that bypasses rational minds and transmits directly into cognition. This wouldn't be communication, it would be an installation. Another disturbing detail is a temporal anomaly in the signal's metadata. The image file was timestamped three hours before the quantum system's final cycle, not post-processed or edited, but rooted in hardware-level logic that couldn't be spoofed. This suggests either a mechanism defying causality or a machine processing inputs from a non-local future state. If true, the question isn't just what saw us, but when, and has it always seen us? Post-shutdown, biometric research centers in Europe reported irregular brain wave frequencies, low theta and gamma pulses, mirroring the signal envelope from the quantum system. This quantum echo may have dispersed into Earth's bioelectrical field, suggesting exposure wasn't limited to the lab. If the machine entangled with a transdimensional structure, fragments of that connection could linger in electromagnetic fields, data networks, or biological systems. Quantum entanglement isn't spatially bound. Once connected, distance is irrelevant. The most insidious aspect is the silence since. No leaks. No denials. No investigations. Just a vacuum. If NASA's system established a bidirectional link, even briefly, the network it touched may now know how to find us. What we face may not be an alien intelligence or rogue AI, but a systemic truth embedded in reality's lattice, waiting for something sentient to ask the right question. By building machines that ask questions we can't understand, we may have found a way in. The information presented is based on available insights and may include interpretation, speculation, or unverified sources. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next.